This is how you guide somebody through a journey of the armoring. And in, during the sessions, it doesn't mean you have to put your hands on every time on the armoring physically. You can do some emotional work. You can do some talking dynamics. You can do some, um, you know, whatever comes up. So through a certain package or line of sessions so that you re really go into the personality of the person. You just really learn to know that person. So where are you? Where are you from? Where do you struggle with? Where do you want to go? Where's the obstacle? What's the next step? Where do you struggle right now? What's the main thing in your life? And you just dig deeper. You're just becoming a de-armoring detective. Working with intimate partner and with close friends when it comes to the armoring can be a challenge if you don't have the right language or the right vocabulary. And as you all know, I'm a com complete consent geek and that will probably never change in my life. What I would do is, um, with really close people or with close friends, I would, I would use the structure of the empowerment dynamics so that when it comes to genital touch, and your friend is comfortable with being touched and de armored on their genitals, that you assure them that you only do what they want you to do so that you don't go into, well, I'm the expert and I'm pressing here and I'm doing that, I'm doing that, that they don't feel invaded by you because that can crash friendships. You need to make that really clear that the the empowerment part has to come from them that they want you to touch their genitals and then you feel if you are willing to do that and you make clear that you do it exactly the way how they want that and then from there you can make slowly steps into um, you know when stuff is coming up when pain is arising when discomfort occurs emotion arise that this is part of the process but make that step by step and slowly when you work with friends and not in the in one session do it all you know just like again just like it might need three four five sessions or so with that person till this person trusts you enough that this person is ready and said hey i really want to have this genital de-armoring now i have this issue i have this problem i didn't dare to say it yet but now i'm ready are you willing to do it so try to get people to this place that they come and request it to you because you're the expert of the practice but they're the expert of their body and you give that expertise to them by making that request you can say what's on the menu. You, you can say from the beginning on, you know, there can be throat de-armoring, anal, there can be cervical de-armoring or yoni de-armoring. There can be so many different ways. And, um, and that you just want to start it really slowly and want to give it to this person what's their choice and when they're ready to tell you and to ask so, so that there's no pressure or no pushing. But you could say as well, on the other hand, you know, um, I imagine or I guess that this is a practice session maybe for a low cost or free that you could say, hey, um, <clears throat> I, I still need um, practice buddy I can practice it with and I would, uh, I would like to practice some genital de-armoring. Are you available for that? You make it verbally clear that there's a switch off a dynamic that this person feels like they're giving access that you can practice with and then you just need to find that level of comfort. How much is that person comfortable with? You know, as we have done that in the training, you know, it's just like this is a lot of friendship between us and connection happening because we have been so close for 10 days. And if you have a friend or somebody else there or somebody you know some kind of better, you just can create this friendship dynamic, but you need to create this frame and the container as conscious as you possibly can and just really clear up the dynamics, who is doing the action, who is it for in the frame, have that um, uh, dedicated to a time frame, it's two hours and we're doing this and uh, can I do that, can I practice that on you and you have a benefit out of that. So that's really clear for the person. Kind of, you know, I would say learn the art of the verbal framing and then, then everything is possible. Uh, you can always there's always something you can do with somebody. And don't push, don't pressure, find out what that is. And when you have this person, for example, in one session, uh, in the next session, they really trust you because they know that their boundaries not being crossed. And then their boundaries literally disappear to some degree because they now can, they can speak it out when they come up. I just want to say that to you and to all of you, 
If somebody says there has no boundaries, danger. <laughs> When you have the right conversation and communication levels ahead and you know that you have the practical skills, the empowerment of choice, if this is in place first, everything else is possible and people can choose what they want. When the action is not more important than the choice, so when the choice is more important than the action, and you know how to bring that into people's expression, then everything is possible. You know, when, when you have a conversation with that person about Yoni de armoring without actually doing it, just the conversation can be de armoring for that person going through the emotional process. Oh my God, I never have been touched from a woman. And, and, and just like, okay, so what's the feeling behind it? How, how is it going there? Do you have a resistance? How does that resistance feel? What's coming up when you, when you imagine that? Stay with the, with the question. A de-armoring session can be a treatment session, but a de-armoring session can be as well a co-creation session. A treatment session is, for example, when you have a broken arm and you go to a doctor, the treatment is they just put that in, in gips, you know, and then you just wear that for three months, and then the arm is good. They do A, B, C, D, E. But in a de-armoring session, of course, there as well. You just start here, and then you do this, and then you do that, and then you do that. But not everybody is the same person in their dynamics, so sometimes you need to adjust that. It's more co-creative. You know, just like you just start with A, but then B is not appropriate. Maybe you, you do D first, and then you do that in a co-creational combination. So this is a really interesting distinction. If you want to have a deeper read into that, and find the difference between a treatment and a co-creation yeah, and that there is a big space and the variety in between how to set things up between a treatment and a co-creation. And there as well in that book is a, is a structure about the de-armoring dynamics using the indirect route for the feedback loop to be in connection with the person. So, so that, there's, there's good stuff in the book comes back to this question, part one question of the three minute game is how do you want me to touch you? When, when, when you bring this awareness in people's mind and emotions, and I said that in the training, it includes the assumption when you ask that question that the person wants to be touched. But assumingly you have this dynamic in place already and this person wants to be touched or sometimes it's a good Thing that the person can say, no, I don't want to be touched at all. If there is a no in place, that this needs to be expressed. No, I don't want to be touched. Great. Okay. But maybe if you want to be touched, you might have the desire to be touched. How would that be? And whenever you have the desire and the choice and you want to be touched in some way on some parts of your body, so how would that be? Let me know. So it, it can be a nice build up into a de-armoring session. Yeah, this is always the path that I would choose. I would not recommend anything else anymore.